actually going to talk a little bit about batteries, particularly deep cycle batteries and what you should actually use. Now, there are several types of deep cycle batteries out there. You've got your, um, your standard lead acid, you've got gel, absorbing glass mat, you know, there's, there's different types. And then you've got, you got your maintenance free batteries and then the ones that you can actually perform maintenance on. Um, for my particular situation and something that you may consider is that if you're going to be storing um, batteries inside so you are essentially going to be um, you know they're gonna be in your basement they're gonna be in your living room like which is in my case um, you need to realize that um, you need to have a sealed battery that does not emit or emits very very little gas because as batteries are charged and discharged they actually emit gas so the very first problem that I had to solve was the fact that my batteries were going to be indoors particularly right in my living room so I needed a battery that wasn't going to emit a bunch of gas and where I work I actually drive a forklift and they have industrial serviceable batteries um, and they smell <laughs> you can smell them when you're sitting on the forklift you can actually smell the gas coming off of the uh, the batteries because no matter how well you seal a battery it's still going to gas that's just the way that it is so in order to prevent that problem and uh, have poisonous gas in the living room I chose to go with uh, an AGM battery <clears throat> and um, AGM batteries are much more expensive than standard deep cycle let's just say lead acid batteries and their construction is actually more efficient and this battery here can actually stay charged for up to six months without needing to be recharged and it has a float service life of nearly 10 years and you can get a lot of cycles out of it as long as you stay within a capacity range this VMAX tanks uh, AGM battery I can get about two maybe at most 3,000 cycles by bringing it to 80 percent of its capacity now what's common for most people is that when they buy a deep cycle battery is that they bring them down to 50 percent that seems to be the kind of the rough um, best value look on renewable energy you bring your batteries down 50 percent unfortunately this VMAX tanks battery will only get about 500 cycles at 50 percent now that doesn't mean that at that 500 cycle suddenly the battery is completely dead it's useless it doesn't do anything can't get anything out of it it just means that the uh, the potential life out of the battery has been severely reduced to the point where it's not reliable enough for you to be able to completely charge it and for it to stay at a reliable charge to power your inverter <clears throat> so no the battery isn't just going to suddenly fall flat on its face and then you can't use it anymore but the life of the actual charge itself is going to be drastically reduced to the point where it's almost not worth having the battery anymore you just replace it so indoors I have to use an AGM battery I also want to extend the life of the battery as much as possible and indoors the battery is not susceptible to the elements such as the winter or the high heat and you now we typically don't let the living room get up past 90 degrees so that's fine for the battery and we definitely don't let the battery get you know below um, about 60 degrees in the winter time so that's fine for the battery too but if this battery were outside then the elements would actually affect its life and you can probably see on this chart here actually it shows the different temperatures and in Fahrenheit and Celsius and then the actual capacity where you bring it down and what the voltage should be at that capacity so essentially speaking it's usually around 68 to 86 degrees in my living room so I use that chart I hit 80 percent right here and I use that chart here to determine when I need to stop the draw on the battery so I'll be watching the voltmeter and when I'm on a draw that is when I'm drawing power 
I'll usually wait until it drops to about 12.5 and then I'll turn the inverter off or I'll remove the draw and it'll come back up to usually right around this area here between 1280 to 1285 and that's as low as I go with it okay I don't bring it any lower than that even in emergencies I won't bring it any lower than that because there's no emergency worth destroying a battery basically that I s invested so much money in so the type of battery that you get the price you want to pay etc um, you know there's there's a lot of factors there to consider and for solar especially indoors for my situation AGM is definitely the way to go it's more expensive yes but uh, it'll last longer uh, there's very little if any gassing due to charge or discharge rates and it has a very high float rate so the service life is very high now the downside again is that you have to have a specialized charge controller or charger to charge the battery you cannot use um, you know wet battery style chargers on a deep cycle battery they're very specific to the kind of charge that they require fortunately my charge controller my flex charge charge controller will handle the AGM battery just fine but it's important to note that you cannot hook up just some standard old battery charger and off you go yes it's going to read the voltage just fine but there's there's certain ways in which it actually charges and floats the battery so it's real important that you uh, you know you get the proper charger for a deep cycle battery so hopefully that will answer some questions um, and hopefully you don't just go out and buy some standard off-the-shelf battery at your local hardware store and say well this will do because it really will not even the dual purpose batteries that are out there and one in particular is the die-hard platinum battery that I'm thinking about it is a deep cycle battery but it's one of those dual purpose batteries where it has cold cranking amps as well as total amp hours they're really good for trolley motors uh, you know marine batteries basically um, but they are not true functioning deep cycle batteries in the sense that something like this is. This VMAX tanks battery was built and designed specifically for storing renewable energy such as solar and wind. That was what it was built for. So because this battery was built for that, I can get more life out of this battery than if I went down to the store and bought some off the shelf deep cycle battery. Okay and uh, as I said before my situation dictates that I need to have a sealed uh, gel or AGM battery that I cannot use a standard um, you know battery basically a wet lead acid battery so if uh, I know I've got a few subscribers who are going to be investing in the system if you decide to go with an off-the-grid setup you're gonna need a sealed battery. AGM is definitely the way to go. If you're just going to be having a couple solar panels in your window and you just want to feed back into the grid, you don't need the battery charge controller or anything else like that. You just need a grid time inverter. There's a lot of information on the internet about wet versus gel versus AGM. Just Google it actually, wet versus gel versus AGM. You're going to get a plethora of information. But uh, I just want to make sure that if you're planning on doing something like this in your own apartment, you make sure that you get something that you can actually breathe around, that you can survive by, because you don't want anything that's going to leak all over the place or something that's going to emit gas. And in fact, as funny as it sounds, you could actually puncture this AGM battery and it's not going to leak all over the place because of the way that it's designed. It's an absorbent glass mat battery. So, all right. Uh, if you have any questions about that, be sure to let me know, and I'd be more than willing to uh, to answer any of your questions. So, take care, guys.